Hello and welcome to these lessons on Biblical Greek, where we'll be going through Croy's A Primer of Biblical Greek. These aren't going to be exhaustive or extensive lectures, but more we'll be going through the book, each chapter, and I'll be pointing out what is important and what you need to focus on. Because <laughs> honestly, uh, Greek isn't that hard to learn. It's just a lot of memorization it's a lot of grit and motivation and getting through. So you're probably not going to learn it in a couple of weeks. Um, my experience has been you're probably not going to be reading Greek well unless you do two years of 30 minutes every day or so. And you probably won't be reading fluently until, you know, four or five years out of 30 minutes every day practicing your Greek. So that's just to gear your expectations. But these videos are hopefully just a guide to help you know what to focus on, what to memorize, and what to do. So, lesson one here. The main thing here is the alphabet. And there are many different ways to pronounce Biblical Greek. I've made a separate video that you can go watch of those different ways. But the main thing to know here is there is pronunciation of each letter that's important and there are many alphabet songs online that you can find that are great for memorizing the letters and then there are diphthongs these are combinations of vowels so here are the diphthongs here and then croy in his book gives you the erasmian pronunciation which is probably the most common and it's it's a good pronunciation the other main one is the modern pronunciation. So a couple highlights, the modern one, rather than big for beta, it would use a V sound. So it'd be veta. Uh, delta, rather than a D sound, it's a hard TH, like in that or this. So it'd be delta. And then uh, not eta, it's an eta. Um... And then instead of a short O, like not, omicron, modern Greek has a long O, omicron. And then upsilon is also E. Um, rather than upsilon, it's ypsilon. So those are the main, main differences. And then with the diphthongs here, modern Greek would say e, 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 av, U, ev, ev. So those are the two main pronunciations and differences. Uh, you'll want to use whatever your teacher uses. Um, I provided recordings for my own students. Syllables, this, these are pretty much the same as English. I wouldn't worry about those. Accents aren't important <laughs> in Greek. Um, the main thing that you need to need to know accents is just where to put the stress in the word. So whenever you see an accent, any of these, like the circumflex or the accent mark, just put stress on that word. And you need to be careful. There's a difference between accents and breathing marks. Breathing marks come at the beginning, the first letter of a word that has a vowel. Um, so rough breathing marks, which is a forward-facing breathing mark. In Erasmian, you pronounce with an H sound. And if it isn't facing forward, it looks more like an apostrophe. You don't pronounce it. In modern Greek, you don't pronounce the breathing marks at all. The, yeah, so he goes on about different accents, and I, I just wouldn't worry about the rules of accents, especially now. They become more of a thing if you're wanting to write in Greek to get the accents right. So don't worry about that. For this lesson, what you want to do... Oh, sorry, punctuation. The main thing with punctuation is this raised dot is a semicolon, and a semicolon is actually a question mark. It can get confusing. You'll get used to it. But just remember that comma and period are the same. But raised dot is a semicolon. Semicolon is a question mark. 
But for this lesson, the main thing you need to take away is learn the Greek alphabet by heart. Do it until you can write out the whole alphabet from memory without referencing any tools. And then after that, work on pronouncing your Greek. And so for my students, I've provided audio. Um, what you want to do is find an audio of what you, how you want to pronounce and put it into a looper uh, that repeats it over and over and over and just loop it until you can say it along with them. Um, really get these sounds down. You can find passages in Bible that maybe memory verses that you've memorized um, and just get the sounds of it in Greek and just loop it over and over and over and copy it. Cop or it's called a technique called shadowing. Shadow their voice with your voice. Um, Croy gives exercises from the Septuagint, which is the Greek translation of the Old Testament. And so he gives an explanation there, um, which is a good read. Um, so yeah, this is, uh, that's lesson one, main thing, learn the alphabet. Um, yeah, so I'll just be making videos going through each lesson, focusing on the, just kind of like this, focusing on what you need to focus on and memorize. Uh, there are tons of Greek grammars out there and most of them are just about the same. It's kind of ridiculous. And the... The thing that Kuroi has going for his book is he has tons of exercises, tons of examples from New Testament and Septuagint, which is a bonus. And he also, well, Mark Young has written a reader that goes along with Croy. And so it's a fictional story about Paul, Onesimus, and Philemon. It's really fun and engaging where exercises can sometimes just be boring, you know, translating over and over and over, where this is like it's drawing you into a story. And his, uh, Young's book corresponds with Croy's book. So uh, the same grammar and vocab that you learn in Croy will be used in Young's book. And so that's a benefit to using Croy. There are other great options out there. I'm not saying Croy is the only, maybe not even the best, I don't know. Um, but it is very good option and it will help you learn Greek. So hopefully you enjoy these videos and hopefully they are help to you in your journey in learning Greek. We hope you enjoyed this episode of The Bible Toolbox. All of the resources mentioned in this episode are posted on our website, thebibletoolbox.com. There you can also find out more information on how to give and support us. And we have loved all of the encouragement and feedback we've received from you. So thanks so much.